every bit matters. And the minute you get it into control, the weight just falls off of you. My special guest today is Mark Suster. He's managing partner of Upfront Ventures, the largest VC firm in Los Angeles. He's also a successful entrepreneur. But he's here because of a New Year's Day post entitled, How I Lost 65 Pounds in 18 Months Without Any Fad Diets or Gimmicks. He posted it on bothsidesofthetable.com. Let me say that again, bothsidesofthetable.com. Naturally, that got my attention, that title. And especially when in the post he made the point that he occasionally eats pizza, licorice, he loves licorice, bagels, ice cream, cheeseburgers, you name it, he occasionally has it. So Mark makes the point that it's about getting new habits, specific measures based on the concept, you manage what you measure. And uh, you make the point in terms of uh, the f measuring the food, you have to, uh, in effect, put it in on the uh, log it, in effect, immediately. Not at the end of the day. You got to do it almost simultaneously. And the tools make it easy. My fitness pal literally has a database. It has a barcode scanner. You scan the barcode. If you eat Cheerios every morning and you start typing in C-H-E-E-R, it pops up Cheerios because it knows that you eat it every day. It automatically puts in your normal portion size. So food logging really truly takes about 10 seconds. And people who have never done it before, it seems obsessive. I promise you, it becomes a habit. It's super easy. I do every meal. The problem is your fidelity of information about what you actually did during the day declines during the day. You just will not remember every little thing that you did if you don't log it when you did it. And it's the hidden calories that if you're not keeping score, you don't realize you consume 300 calories a day, extra calories a day. And just to make the point again, 300 calories per day, which is nothing. It's a bagel, it's a piece of pizza, it's an extra portion of cereal, an extra bowl of rice. 300 per day times seven, meaning over a week, is 2,100 calories. So that's the equivalent of you eating eight days instead of seven days. You're eating an entire extra day per week for 300 calories per day. Every bit matters, and the minute you get it into control, the weight just falls off of you. So uh, a couple of things on that. One is uh, post-COVID world, which eventually will happen. Uh, you make the point that you have to plan when you go into areas where you know the diet's going to be under attack. Uh, movies, receptions, working dinner, alcohol. Walk us through those in terms of uh, how you cope to make sure uh, these don't blow away uh, the what, what you've been uh, doing. So start with movies. Well, as a starting point, I said you have to get control of your mind and then you need measurement. And those are two really important ingredients in weight loss that we don't think about. We think about food and exercise, but mind and measurement matter even more. And here's why. Psychologically, we make mistakes that are tied to the human psyche. So when I go to a movie theater and I smell the aroma and I think about being a child in a movie theater, I think I need to eat popcorn. Yes. Well, movie theater popcorn is coated in butter and oil and is probably more than a thousand calories. So it's like eating half of your entire food intake in one bucket of popcorn. But I'm psychologically tied to memories of smells and moments in my past that caused me to take behavior that's irrational. When I go to a cocktail party or an after work party, normally at home, I wouldn't snack on a bunch of appetizers. Uh, but suddenly I'm, my anxiety is up and I'm actually very social. I don't mind talking to people all the time, but it's this subtle anxiety build of having to communicate that you start eating empty calories and you don't realize. So getting control of psychology, understanding what is my plan for the day? What am I doing today? Oh, I'm going to a work event tonight. I know that's where I make mistakes. So I'm actually not going to fall into that trap because I'm thinking about it in advance. So Noom which I'm not an investor in. It's for some people, not for others. Like I'm not pushing one product, but one thing that's really good about Noom is it forces you to think about the psychology of why you eat. 
and why you overeat and why you make the choices you make. And it forces you to write it down as a journal. You can do this without Noom. You can do this yourself. They just make it easier to do so. But I realize that when I'm in a group at a dinner and there are appetizers ordered for the table, I always eat them. But if I was on my own, I wouldn't order that stuff. When I'm in a social environment where I have to talk a lot, I eat more. If I have any alcohol, that lowers my inhibitions to eating food that I shouldn't eat. So I don't drink alcohol socially now, like when I'm in a work environment, but I, I don't abstain from anything. So I have a little alcohol, a little pizza, a little everything, but just not in that environment because it causes bad behavior. When I go to a movie, I bring a little bit of a cheat. Let's say I might bring a, a healthy chocolate bar so that I feel like I'm getting that need met and I don't have to order the movie theater popcorn. Uh, one of the virtues you point out of uh, counting the calories, so to speak, keeping track of them, is coming up with innovative combinations that can fill you up but not blow away the calories. Can you walk us through some of those just to give us an example of uh, the creativity that comes by measuring these things? Well, as a starting point, because I never thought about stuff like this, the classic mistake I would make is I love bagels, okay? And so one bagel never seemed to fill me up. So I always had two bagels and it didn't seem like a lot until I realized over time, two bagels is 600 calories. If you add butter or cream cheese, that's like eight or 900 calories. And I started realizing that eggs actually fill you up and make you not want to cheat more. And they're actually not as caloric. So you can have four eggs, eggs are 70 calories a piece. You can have four eggs and a half a bagel and feel really full. Four eggs, 280, half a bagel, 150. And I found that with eggs, that I then didn't have to put cream cheese or butter on it. So there's an idea where you're getting more protein, less carbohydrate, you feel more full, and your total calories go down massively. A second idea is I put egg whites into a measuring cup so I know exactly how many I have. You can put um, a quarter uh, of a cup of egg whites, which is four egg whites. That's what it's equal to. So you just learn these things over time. And I would add one egg yolk. Okay, so egg whites are obviously much lower calorie than an egg. I would add one egg yolk, mix it all together and make eggs. And in effect, it kind of tasted like eggs because it had the egg yolk in there, but it only had the calories of one egg. And then you start to mix in things like you can put in a little ham or you can put in a little um, onion or tomato or whatever. But what I learned was by doing the onion or the bell peppers or the tomato, I didn't need to put a ton of cheese. The thing that kills you is the cheese. So when you go to a breakfast, when you go to a brunch and they give you a big omelet, they've soaked it in butter, they've soaked it in oil, they're giving you full eggs and they're just covering it in cheese. And here's the reason why. Cheese tastes good. <laughs> you know, if you're a cook and you add fat or butter or salt to anything, it makes it taste good. But you learn to appreciate the taste of whole foods when you start to cut out all the crap and you just eat eggs without cheese and it's great. Now, I do like cheese, so I will allow myself cheese, but I measure it. So I put in a quarter cup of cheddar cheese, <clears throat> a quarter cup, which is nothing, is 110 calories. So imagine they're probably putting in a full cup of cheese. They're probably putting 400 to 450 calories in your omelet. Leave aside the bread, leave aside the hash browns, leave aside the milk you put in your coffee. The cheese will kill you. Right, and I love your formula for a quesadilla. Can you walk us through that? That uh, yeah, fills you up I mean, without uh, also the like diet? if you think of chipotle, which I love, <laughs> but a chipotle quesadilla is like 600 calories because their tortilla is 300 calories and it's filled with fat and they just cover it in cheese. <clears throat> so I started innovating with my own tortillas. There's two types, not, not, not that I make them, but that I buy them. So a normal tortilla is 140 calories that you can buy like the typical mission tortilla, 140 calories, or they have a carb smart one that you can get on Amazon, 70 calories. Okay, and it's lower carb, lower calories, but either is okay. And I started by cooking eggs and just putting light cheese, 80 calories of cheese, light eggs, 
and uh, tortilla and making my own quesadillas with a little bit of protein in it, whether it's eggs, whether it's chicken, light cheese, and a portion controlled size tortilla. And it's really filling. And I feel like I'm eating a breakfast burrito or something like that. The problem when you go to a restaurant is you end up eating all the other garbage that makes it taste amazing. And you have to be careful about avocado. Avocado is great, eat it on its own. But when you pile it into cheese and eggs and tortilla and everything else, it adds up. So just be careful of it on its own. Um, and if you're making burritos, if you're putting rice and beans on top of sour cream and cheese and chicken and the tortilla, you're into 900 to 1100 calories before you've started anything. So if you can simplify the amounts of food and the type of food you eat in one portion throughout the day, you could eat anything you want.